Saltations. I'm Chevalier and I bid you welcome to the situation and guide of Brittany. This is part of the guide expansion guide. We're gonna talk about how you should expand as, as Brittany. As you can see, Brittany uh, borders the big guys, so it's France, England, the Ultra, or maybe Castile. So you're gonna have a pretty huge fight on your hand. Uh, fortunately, Brittany has an alliance with Burgundy, uh, but Burgundy later on is gonna lose uh, uh, under the Burgundy head as event. It's gonna be split between France and uh, Austria, so it's gonna be a little bit problematic of how you can actually pull this off. Now, first and foremost, you should try to remember that this alliance is not going to be permanent and it's not going to be there for for that much time. So first and foremost, you need to make sure that you have a separate alliance with somebody. Usually the enemies of France are going to help you, so England and Austria. But as you can see here, Austria is a long way from getting an alliance with you, because you are already Burgundy. And at the same time, same goes for for England. Although, as you can see here, due to a bug, I think they haven't rivaled Burgundy, but they usually rival Burgundy, so they'll have the same uh, 68. As you can see, they are hostile to you, so you can't ally them. So, it's going to be problematic for you to get alliances, but they are doable. Either uh, Aragon is doable as well, Castile is doable as well, and some other uh, enemies of province, like the Papal State, Savoy, Anything of that, uh, think of that type. So, first rival is province, and you should probably get claims on mine and Anjou and attack province. My recommendation is to just uh, core one, and the second one just keep on cord, or do not take it at all. Simply because to form France, you need to actually have only main, if I'm not mistaken. You need to have main and not Anjou. So you can actually keep and shoot and feed it to your vassal later on. So just take main so you can actually have a bitch head into forming uh, into forming France in Lithuania. So main is just the most important one. If you want to take Anjou, then you can do it two ways. First, uh, first way is to simply uh, vassalize province, and it'll be fine. Just vassalize province and feed feed none to the papal state. Just I will send them to like we none. So you can actually have a vassal in province. They'll lose the. They'll have the pew with Lorraine. No, the pew Lorraine is gonna break free, I think. Uh, oh no, you're gonna inherit the pew as well. So you're gonna have Lorraine as a vassal again. This is a bit problematic. But what I recommend is just take it main, uh, Korg main, then in a separate war take Anjou and feed it to a vassal. Most likely it's gonna be Gascon. Now, once you've taken this, it's a waiting time. Pretty much you need to have the necessary alliances with the enemies of France, so you can declare war on France and take lands from France. The same goes for England, so you can also declare war on England or on France and take lands from them. Whoever you choose is going to be systematic and it's really going to be a uh, trench warfare in this region. Like just uh, move from alliances to alliances. Now, depending on what idea route you went for, either the military first or either the exploration first, uh, either influence first, if you want for the military, you should try to strive to basically expand into Portugal and take Madeira and the Azores. When you declare war on England, uh, Portugal is gonna get called in and you can get access and perhaps reach Portugal. If you look here, you can actually reach... You cannot reach here uh, in Madeira, but you can actually reach... Uh, about, oh, you can actually... You're close to region Alejandro by a little bit, but unfortunately you have to take Cumbria or Porto basically. Then actually move again on this land in a separate war. But if you take just, uh, for example, Porto and break the alliances that they have with England, it should be global basically. Just uh, take Coimbra basically because it's smaller. Take Cumbria, uh, or Cumbria, then actually move on to a second war and take this land here. Then you can easily move to the new world with uh, uh, not with. Uh, less problems basically. Uh, at the same time be careful of Castile, break the lines that Portugal has with Castile so we can actually expand faster and uh, maybe kill their bonuses to friendly, uh, to historical friend or anything of that sort. Now, fighting this guy is gonna be trench warfare. If you're the HRE Emperor uh, and you inherit, the, inherit Burgundy, it's gonna be great for you. You're gonna have a decent amount of power, 
and you can expand quite fast and you have to you can skip some steps but we're gonna go with those positions that you actually haven't been able to get the HRE Emperorship and you haven't been able to, been able to get the Brigade Inheritance. So what you do next is simply go for Trench Warfare. You fight France, you simply take lands from France that you need to form France. So basically you need to actually take the main barrier of Madoc, Paris, Orléans, Nemours and Champagne. Once you take these lands uh, and core them the rest of the lands feed them to your subjects and you annex the subjects are going to be free because they're going to be they're going to have your cores and uh, it's going to be cheaper on points the same said of uh, to some degree uh, trying to feed france before this happens and letting france conquer some lands perhaps with the Burgundian inheritance they're going to get uh, uh, this uh, this lands here they might get calais as well and core calais they might expand into i don't know uh, probably Aragon. Depends on the luck, but try to leave France to expand to some degree so they can waste some of your points. This is a more, uh, what's it called, expert uh, strategy, but it's doable. But for the average player, just conquer France, feed it uh, to your vassals, except the lands that you need to form France. Then for France, that you can actually get uh, those uh, cores for free. Now for England, you're gonna take Normandy and Co, which you should probably feed to your vassal. I recommend having a vassal of Normandy, but it to some degree is better for you to leave these lands for later on and just take a beachhead into England. Uh, Cornwall is a good beachhead into England. Uh, Cumbria is a good be uh, Cumbria is a uh, good beachhead into England as well. Any one of these lands here, so that you can actually uh, expand into the English islands, into the British islands with ease. So try to make sure that you have a beachhead into England and try not take these lands here. France can fight for them. With, uh, with relative ease. Now let's say that you basically fought two wars against France and one war against England. At this point in time you should probably have uh, Gascon as your vassal and start feeding lands that Gascon has to, to Gascon, uh, feed Fran uh, lands that France has to Gascon and it goes later on to the point where France is weakened and they're gonna be easily killed. As for the expansion into England, if you're lucky you're gonna be able to get one of these provinces here. I don't know if you can pull it off simply because of the forts here, but I think you should be able to, to get Cornwall at least, because it doesn't border any forts. If not, just take Normandy and call and release a vassal. If you manage to take um, the channel, basically take Cornwall so you can have a beachhead. Remember that you need about 25,000 to 30,000 troops to fight off England, so you need that much force limit to fight against the English on the mainland because you're not gonna get any uh, help from your vassals uh, or allies. It's possible for you to call in Scotland and you're gonna have a decent amount of, uh, of power coming from Scotland up top so it'll help you against uh, England. So at that point you need about 20,000 to 25,000 troops just to make sure that you can uh, you don't you won't get wiped by uh, by Scotland in, uh, by England in a war or in your beachhead. Now, fighting England, the England is again a trench warfare and just go bit by bit, then expand into the English Channel Trainer by taking lands from Holland and the rest of the states here. Whoever owns them, either it's Austria or any of the, the Flanders got released, anything of that sort. Just take those lands and uh, slowly expand into the English Channel Trainer. For this part here, expand into Aragon, Castile, and Portugal slowly and slowly. These expansions and expansion into the new world is gonna get you to basically the mid game. I would say uh, there are gonna be uh, lots of heavy and difficult wars against France, uh, France, England, Aragon, and Castile, simply because of your position and how difficult it is to play there. And uh, you also need to have comparable, uh, comparable enemies of your enemies, so you can actually ally them. Again, it's a little bit difficult, and there's not even much more to say. Although, with a little bit of skill, you can expand into a new world and get some cash from there. And get really, really, really rich because you can actually pull trade into the Genot, or into the Bordeaux train node. As you can see here, you can pull it to the Bordeaux train node and uh, you can pull into the Bordeaux train node from everything here. So you can actually get a decent amount of cash. But yeah, this is Brittany. Uh, Future targets include uh, Italy, uh, Scotland as well, so 
the rest of the British Islands, then moving on to Norway, Sweden, and the uh, HRE Emperorship, which should be doable at some point in time, and uh, Ottomans. Again, this is part of the late game. You're gonna really struggle to actually get the uh, development and the provinces necessary to actually be a huge, huge superpower. But yeah. I'm Chevalier, hope you enjoyed this, if you enjoyed this, comment, like and subscribe, I like, I like any kind of feedback, so even if it's negative or positive, I just want to know how do you feel about my, my videos and what I can do to improve them. With this, I bid you farewell guys, and I'll see you next time.